All right. Good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are in the world. Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to today's webinar. Um, it is hosted by Mina Speakers. Uh, for those of you whom I haven't met, my name is Sana Sam, and I'm the founder of Mina Speakers. We are the leading speakers agency in the Middle East. We host fantastic experts and thought leaders, and then they share their knowledge on stages and one-to-one -one coaching, uh, consulting, and now through a digital speaker series. So we are so delighted for all of you to be here with us. It is uh, a productive opportunity for us during these times when things are a bit slower. And it was a way for us to help you gear up for the future. We know that things are tough right now, but this too shall pass. And so we want to make sure that our followers and friends are as prepared as possible for the future that is coming. And so this is why we're having these digital speaker series. We wish you all the success and personal growth as possible. And uh, perhaps an alternative to Netflix. So I am so curious to see who I have on this call. If you can do me a favor, because all of the questions will be through the chat. Um, so you can type your questions throughout the webinar in the chat, and then our host will be able to go through them and answer them afterwards. So if you can do me a favor, just as a trial, if you can tell me where you're from, then that would be fantastic. So all of you on this call, where are you from? If you can type it in the chat, there's a chat box. Ooh, nice. All right. So I'm seeing answers dropping in here quite quickly. We have Malta, Atlanta, Dubai, Sweden. Uh, we have Abdulaziz from India. Uh, he's living in Dubai, San Antonio, Dubai, Beirut, Elaine, Ottawa, Canada, the US. <laughs> More from Dubai, Bangladesh, India, and uh, Okay, some more answers are dropping in. I'm glad we all know how to use Zoom. Fantastic. So we're gonna move on. Uh, we're here to listen to the man of the hour. He is uh, bald, he is bearded, he is beautiful, but he's not just a pretty face, as many of you know. He comes from a chemical engineering and computer science background, and he has spent the last 10, what is it, five years within marketing and growth hacking. And so that comes in the format of copywriting, um, you know, digital content creation strategies. And this is why we're here today to listen to him. So please give him a virtual big round of applause to Nabil Aziz. I am going to unmute you now and you can put your camera on so that you can share your insights. And I think you're going to have to turn on. Okay, there you go. Yeah. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Call again. Lockdown, lockdown style on Zoom. This Friday morning or evening, wherever you are. How's everybody doing? Um, quick, uh, quick roll call. Where's, uh, uh, where, are my, uh, where are my people at? The guys who signed up after I promoted this to our list. Sound off in the chat. All right, what's up? Perfect, all right. So we're gonna get started. Um, and I'm going and we're just going to get right into it. And I'm trying to not keep. So can everybody see my screen? Give me a one in the chat if you can see my screen. All right, perfect. Everybody can see. All right, so I've got the, I've got the chat on the side here so I can see your uh, comments and questions and stuff. At the end, you might have questions as I go through the material. 
So if that's the case, just drop them in the chat, and if I have time, I'll get, I'll get uh, to them. Awesome. All right. So let's get started. First of all, huge shout out and thank you to Sana, uh, the uh, chief, I believe, chief inspiration officer of MENA Speakers for having us on, organizing this, putting all of this together, and obviously inviting me. Uh, and she already introduced MENA Speakers. Uh, they are the premier speakers bureau in the Middle East. And if you're thinking of maybe doing a little public speaking, some speaking engagements, uh, traveling the world, think about coming to the Middle East, Dubai, Saudi, Bahrain, Kuwait. And if you want to do that, just get in touch with Mina Speakers and they can hook it up for you. Okay. So. The topic of today, how to talk and write so that people will never forget you. Okay. And why this is important, um, everybody uses words to persuade. And persuasion happens in all forms. We want our uh, you know kids to do the things that we ask them to do we want our employees to work with us to achieve the objectives of our organization we want our, our loved ones our spouses our husbands and wives to um to uh, reciprocate our our love for them so the way we do this is obviously with words and um, to a lesser extent, uh, or maybe a greater extent, with our body language and the way we communicate non-verbally. And what I wanted to do in this webinar was to quickly go through a few techniques, okay, just a few, that you can use to make the words that you speak and write more powerful. And by making those words more powerful, what you're going to have is more attention, more remembrance, more impact, and overall more compliance with whatever your goals are. And this is a Dropkick Copy presentation. And who the hell are Dropkick Copy? We are a, uh, a marketing agency, specifically an email marketing agency, and we help B2B entrepreneurs make more sales from their email lists and social media. And our work is responsible for over $500,000 in revenue over the past six months. And you can see this asterisk here where uh, the word responsible is. Remember that and ask me about the asterisk at the end because it's important. I'll, I'll explain it to you um, at the end of the, uh, the webinar or at the end of my presentation. And essentially, what we do for our clients is we turn attention into money using words. All right, does that make sense to everybody? Give me a one in the chat if that makes sense. All right, Yusuf, thank you. Leslie, Naveen, perfect. Richard, Mazullah, excellent. All right, so everybody gets it, all right? Uh, okay, so before we get started, I, wanted to I want us to play a little game. And this game is called Complete the Famous Quote, all right? Um, and, and Sana, uh, you, can, uh, you can probably unmute yourself if you, have, uh, if you want to weigh in on stuff and, and, and comment. It'll be, I think it would be nice to have a, a chat back and forth. So I, I, do, I feel like I'm not, so I don't feel like I'm just talking to a camera. Don't worry, we're all here with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. Okay, so complete the famous quote, okay? Uh, one small step for man. Give me the answer in the chat. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, most of you got it. All right, excellent. And the next quote is, free at last, free at last. Let's go. Give me the answers.
All right, good job, Leslie. Who else got it? All right. And the last one, the last one, it, a little bit more obscure, maybe because I cut it off, you might not get it, but here we go. Be the change you. Okay, okay, everybody got this. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, okay, so these statements or one liners, okay, and the, the, the technical term for a one liner in English grammar is called an epigram. All right. So these one liners are famous. They're uh, decades old, okay, decades. And there are other famous statements that are centuries old, maybe thousands of years old, okay? Um, and I wanna ask you a question. What do you think makes these statements famous? Give me your answers in the chat. Salma says life experience is good. Richard, Richard says resonate, right? Very good, they resonated, Leslie. Emotional connection, perfect. Impact, perfect. The author answer, a bus is simple yet powerful. Excellent, excellent. So all of these are correct answers and we could uh, summarize them in a way, this is just my way of summarizing them, okay? Uh, one, the person who said it was famous, okay? Two, the event, in which they said it was famous, all right? And three, the words, they were said famously, okay? Now, uh, most of us, maybe even all of us, I, I doubt we are going to be in a position where we are, are famous, okay? And we may not be in positions historically in the grand scheme of things, uh, we may not be in events, historical events that are famous. However, every single one of us, through the use or the correct use of words and language in the way we write and in the way we talk, can say things famously, okay? Because there are three components to a fam famous statement. If, uh, for example, Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Neil Armstrong said what they said in an awkward or silly way, the, those statements would not have have lasted okay because it is not about what you say okay it's about how you say it okay now the, don't get me wrong what you are saying is important you can't just say nonsense or gibberish or uh you know spout negativity and you know you know those kinds of things but the idea is the delivery is just, import, is just as important as the information you are trying to convey because um, informu information is communicated between parties, right? And in order for that information to be transmitted correctly, you need to have that information received correctly. And what happens when you say what you wanna say in an awkward way or an inoptimal way or an incorrect way, the effect is diminished or negated completely, okay? And I'm gonna give you guys a few resources as we go through this webinar to help you, you know, understand these concepts and help you improve your communication. But, and the first one I'm gonna give you is this book called Made to Stick. Uh, anybody, has anybody read this book before? Give me a one in the chat if you've read this book before. Okay, Mohammed says yes. All right. So this is a really good book. It's made by two, um, I guess you could call them uh, psychologists or professors or whatever they are. But Chip and Dan Heath, they're two brothers. Okay, and the book is called Made to Stick. And the subtitle is why, why Some Ideas Survive and Others Die. And the main, uh, the thesis of the book is them trying to break down or understand why famous quotes like uh, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind have lasted so long. And um, I could give you guys a little summary about this book in this mnemonic here, and it's the, uh, the mnemonic that they use. It's success uh, without the last S, all right? 
And what, sex, what success is, is um, an abbreviation for a few, like six concepts that make ideas sticky, okay? And uh, when you want your ideas to be, uh, like when you want your statements to, to be paid attention to, to be remembered and to be acted upon, okay? first of all, they need to be what? Simple, okay? Simple is the of complex. Every idea that you want to communicate has a simple core to it that if you reveal that core and elimin eliminate the complexity around it and communicate just the core, it is received much more powerfully. Okay. And the second one is unexpected. And what unexpected means is uh, people in general we are busy, we don't have, we don't have time for uh, you know, what you wanna say or your ideas or whatever. You have to make us pay attention. And the way you make us pay attention is by interrupting our standard patterns and interrupting our, uh, our you know, basic processes that we're going through throughout the day uh, in a way that gets us to stop, look at you and pay attention to what you're saying. Okay, the third thing that you need if you want your statement, statements or people to pay attention to your statements, remember them and act on them, is they need to be concrete. And concrete is the opposite of abstract. Okay, abstract, you can think of it in terms of like theoretical concepts, whereas concrete is referring to things that are practical that we can see, smell, hear, taste, and touch. Okay, so let's say, for example, you want to sell face cream, okay? Don't sell the face cream. The face cream is an abstract concept. Sell a face that has fewer wrinkles or no wrinkles or looks younger, okay? Um, the next thing that you want is you want your statement to be credible. And credibility, what that refers to is the concept or idea or statement has to make sense in and of itself. So it should make sense intrinsically, okay? It should immediately, if I read it, if, I, uh, if, if you say it to me, okay, I should be able to go, oh, that makes sense, okay? And the final two are more related to the emotional aspect and what uh, is emotional, okay? The more emotional you can make the idea, if you can connect with the, per, uh, with the person that you're communicating with at an emotional level, your statements or your words will have a much greater impact. And finally, uh, stories, because stories are the way humans have communicated with uh, through, you know, thousands and thousands. Um, and it's the way our brains are, are wired to uh, absorb and process in information. Now, I'm going to give you an example of this in action because this in and of itself, this framework, this success framework is abstract. And I want to make it more concrete for you. Okay. Now, uh, when I asked you, why were those famous sayings famous? I could have explained it this way. I could have said credibility, context, and composition. Okay. Instead, I said the person was famous, the event was famous, and it was said famously. Now, uh, what is the difference here? Uh, what, what are the differences between these two ways of communicating the information? Okay. Now, Okay, number one, uh, this is not simple. This is complex, okay? This is, a, these words, I have to actually give uh, a lot more explanation to them before you're, you're, if you're, before you're going to be able to understand it too. Uh, Richard, perfect, you said, uh, Richard said it's abstract and that's absolutely correct, it's abstract, it's not concrete. Uh, again, I have to explain credibility, context and composition to you before you would get it. Whereas famousness, okay, is something that we uh, immediately understand because everybody has this picture in their mind, a shared picture. We all have this shared picture in, in our mind of what famousness or fame is, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Okay, credible, okay? Uh, credibility is not, I'm not referring to the word credibility here, but I'm referring to the concept uh, in the, the success framework, okay? If I showed you this or told you this, okay, you, it wouldn't make sense to you immediately. 
you wouldn't go, oh, that makes sense. I would have to explain it to you, perhaps in some detail before you would get it, all right? Whereas this, when I explain it to you, it immediately makes sense to you, okay? And uh, finally, emotional and stories uh, are not relevant here. So the way I would uh, improve my, uh, my description of uh, the statements more powerful was, or is, if I would use uh, emotion and stories to communicate this framework, all right? Uh, does that make sense to everybody? Give me a one in the chat if that makes sense to you. All right, good. Everybody's paying attention and the responses are much faster. Love it, love it, love it. Excellent. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is give you three um, simple concepts or ideas to give your writing more punch, okay? And the first one is show, don't tell. And this is a, a writing a writing tool, a, a writing you know, method that uh, authors use to make their words more impactful or vivid, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna demonstrate it by giving you a few examples, okay? So if you wanna do show, don't tell, okay? Don't say I was unlucky, okay? What you wanna do is say something like, my luck took a nosedive off a cliff with a noose around her neck and on the way down, put a pistol in her mouth and pull the trigger, all right? You see the difference there. Um, what I'm doing is instead of stating a fact, okay, what I'm doing is I'm painting a picture of that fact that makes the, uh, makes the statement more interesting, more attention grabbing, and also it uh, adds more gravity to the statement, okay? Let's go with another example, okay? We can say, well, if we're going to do show, don't tell, don't say babies are cute, okay? We might say something like, a baby is God's opinion that the world should go on, all right? So now we're bringing, uh, we're bringing metaphor, we're, uh, we're bringing um, some sort of elevation to it, and we're saying uh, something factual in a much more interesting way, all right? Let's go, okay, so the next concept that we want to do is don't let them see this point, all right? Um, who here is stand-up comedy? Give me a one in the chat if you like watching stand-up comedy. Zero, someone who, who says zero. <laughs> Richard says zero, okay, Richard is being a contrarian here. All right, okay, so... Most people, I guess 99% of you like, uh, like stand-up comedy. And have you ever um, heard somebody tell a joke where you already knew the punchline? Is it still funny? Okay. I mean, sometimes it might be, but most of the time it wouldn't be. So if you want your communication or your words, the way you speak, the way you write, to be... Um, more attention grabbing, more impactful, and more uh, rememberable, okay? Don't let them see what com what's coming. And what that means is you want to use things like uh, punchlines and plot twists. You want to use extremes and contradictions. And you want to use double meanings and new meanings. And I'm going to explain this uh, by, we're going to go through a few examples, okay? Uh, and I've taken a few screenshots of um, you know, friends of mine who are also writers who are really good at using these mechanisms to communicate. So uh, first is my friend Daniel, okay? And I'm just gonna read this through with you, okay? Just follow along with me, all right? And we'll see what's, gonna go, what's going on, okay? Uh, so Daniel says, sure. You might see me doing pretty well these days in the copywriting space, hanging out in my I-8, but it wasn't always this way. You see, if I still listened to the music I used to, this wouldn't be a reality. So to, to backtrack a bit, for most of my childhood, I listened to music all the time, like legitimately a lot of music, whether I was doing homework, playing a game, or, or just eating bananas before bed. You bet music was playing. It was like my life had a soundtrack. I bombarded with stars, skies, dreams, and oceans. 
But as I would recently discover, all of those things had been some subconsciously conditioning me for failure. Turns out, these songs were draining me of my energy. I mean, I'd be sitting in my office trying to write some sales copy for a client, listening to my tunes, and out of nowhere, I just pass out. I could be anywhere, a coffee shop, my office, even my car, yes, even while driving, and I'd start snoring. One time was particularly embarrassing. I went to the bathroom doing my thing, decided to put in some headphones, and before I knew it, it was daytime. I'd been on the toilet for nine hours, fast asleep. My legs felt like radio static, numb and tingly. After this happened a few more times, I'd had enough. I needed answers. So I looked up the highest rated sleep doctor on Yelp for a formal diagnosis. I went in to have him take a look. What I learned shocked the hell out of me. I went in almost certain it was some kind of medical condition. But as it turns out, I just needed to stop listening to lullabies, all right? So you see what he was doing there. He went through all of this, this story, okay? And then at the end, he gave us something completely unexpected. And that's what I call, uh, you know, using a punchline, all right, or a plot twist. And we're gonna read another example of this from my friend James, okay? And James writes, I was just a, the victim of a heinous experience. If you're easily offended, please do not read any further. What I am about to share is disgusting, shocking, and absolutely infuriating. Ready for this? My family and I are sitting at the food court, enjoying our Sunday afternoon, knocking back some artery-clogging goodness, chatting about the typical nothings of a family who has zero excitement in their lives. And all of a sudden, a sit right beside us. Essentially, the same table. I was equal distance to them as I was my family, and they just started chatting amongst themselves like it's normal. At this point, you're probably thinking, James, I mean, come on, man. There must have been, there must not have been other seats. That's what's so disturbing. There were seats everywhere. In fact, all they had to do was jump over one, okay, and they would have been a perfectly acceptable buffer between us. But nope didn't even cross their minds. As you can imagine, I'm steaming mad at these, these scumbags for ruining our Saturday. So you know what I did? I finished my meal, got up politely, handed our tray to the janitor lady who, who looms around the garbage cans, and left. Of course, you're probably sitting there thinking, wow, James, way to let the scumbags win. You wimp. If that's what you're thinking, that's called victim blaming. And you're as bad as that 12-year-old and his grandma that ruined our perfectly nice Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Pathetic. All right? So again, that's a plot twist. All right? Um, and the way, they're, the way they're communicating this, or the way they're writing it, it as you're reading this for the first time, it, you can't imagine that this is where we're going to end up. But we end up here. And it's, it's very amusing when, when we do. All right? So let's do a few more examples. And this is from my friend, Ed Lattimore. And here, the example is of, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so what he's doing here is he's going to use double meanings and new meanings, all right? And he's going to use extremes and contradictions, all right? So let's take a look at it. Crackheads hustle for four days straight to get a rock. No sleep and no food. You ever worked that hard for something? don't get outworked by a crackhead, all right? So he takes crackhead, something uh, uh, generally uh, understood as being very negative, okay? And he transforms that meaning into uh, something that is positive. So crackhead in Ed Lattimore's parlance is synonymous with, with hard work and work ethic. And it's a, it's a recurring motif uh, in Ed Lattimore's writing. Um, all right, more examples from Ed Lattimore. Uh, and here he's using double meaning, okay? And this is recent because of the coronavirus, okay? Call it the Black Plague and no one bats an eye. Call it the flu, everyone loses their mind, all right? And what he's doing here is the Black Plague has nothing to do with black people, okay? 
uh, they call it the Black Plague because of the, the black uh, scars or boils that happen uh, in, in the people who get it, all right? So he's taken, he's taken, he switched out the meaning, okay, of the, of the black and black plague to something completely different, okay? And the, the funny thing, and he, when he posted this, uh, people didn't get it. They actually took him seriously, all right? And that, that, that was hilarious in and of itself, right? More uh, from Ed Lattimore. Uh, here he's switching out the words of a, you know, famous, uh, like a famous statement that, you know, women like to say. He says, uh, if you won't smoke crack with me at my poorest, you, dare, you don't deserve to do lines with me when I'm bawling. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> All right, so that's that's Ed Lanamore. He's awesome. Uh, he's a he's a he's a you know um, you know self-published author. You can check him out. He has a book called uh, "Not uh, Caring." Okay, this the this is the book title. It's called "Not Caring What Other People Think Is a Superpower." You can check it out on Amazon. All right. Okay, so more examples. Let's do a lady now. Okay, this is uh, Laura Belgrade. She's awesome. Okay, here we go. Doing it half-assed is a whole butt cheek better than not doing it at all. All right, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, so uh, okay, so half-assed here, um, she is. Uh, what she's doing is she's uh, changing the meanings of words. Okay, so what she's doing. So half-assed is generally understood as being, you know, something that's not good. You're not doing a good job of it. All right, and you. I don't know if you've all, if you've all heard this saying. Um, uh, perfect is the enemy of good or uh, done is better than perfect. Those are both cliches, okay? Laura takes that cliche and says it in a much more interesting way, right? Another from Laura. Screw making a brand personality. Make your personality the brand, all right? So what she's doing is a bit of wordplay here, okay? And if you... Uh, um, if you listen to rappers, rappers are a great way to to study uh, wordplay like this because they're always they're always using metaphors and punchlines and um, you know wordplay to make what you know make their rhymes much more interesting. Okay, more from Laura Belgrade. Dress for the job you want. Why I'm always wearing pajamas. Okay, so Laura has this thing where um, this is another quote of hers where she's like. Uh, you know, you know, there's entrepreneurs who are who are heart driven and impact driven. I'm couch driven. Okay, so that's a Laura uh, Laura Belgrade quote. Also, she is uh, what she does is she likes to use uh, things that everybody are kind of uh, everybody's kind of thinking, and she likes to be a contrarian. So her motif is like totally against the idea of hustle culture. She's She's like uh, the lazy entrepreneur, uh, if you will. And, and, you know, she's a millionaire, which means, you know, what she's doing is work. Okay. All right. A couple from me now. Okay. This is a marketing one. I like my marketing like I like my women with a big back end. And a big and a back end here is a marketing term, which refers to the, uh, the upsell that you uh, offer your clients. Uh, after you sell them your core offer, which is used to increase the the lifetime value of a customer. Okay, so what I've done is I've switched the mean, meanings here. All right, one more. Uh, this is I think I I mean I I've written this before, but I think I got it from Ray Edwards. Okay, so your problem isn't knowing what to do, it's doing what you know. Okay, so it's just a little bit of wordplay here. Okay. And again, we're going back to these three concepts, punchlines and plot twists, extremes or contradictions, double meanings or new meanings, okay? Whenever you can use any of these things, your words will become more powerful. All right, I'm gonna give you, use their imagination, okay? You don't have to be literal and explicit in what you say. You can be implicit and leave things out and let the person you're speaking to complete the picture. Their imagination is far more powerful than any words that you can use, okay? So here's one example from me. And this was recent, I think. Uh, it could be worse. It will get better. 
all right? And what I'm doing here is I'm not referring to anything specific. I'm letting the reader complete that picture in their mind, all right? This is, uh, this is I can't remove who said this, but this is a good one. When I was a boy, I was told anybody could become president. Now I'm beginning to believe it. He's letting you complete the picture or the, to complete the meaning in your mind, okay? So, and also he's, um, he's giving us something unexpected here. So when I was a boy, I was told anybody become, be, could become president. That's positive, all right? Now I'm becoming, beginning to believe it. That's a negative meaning because the, 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 the implication is that now any, like any dope can become president, all right? So uh, is everybody following me? Give, me? give me a one in the chat if this makes sense to you. Or if you have any questions, uh, you know, drop them in here. Quick question, Amar, Amar says, how can one incorporate these techniques with a history blog, for example? Okay, that's a, that's a really good question. I'm gonna find an example for you uh, in my Gmail uh, and we'll cover it at the end of the webinar, all right? That's a good question. Remind me about that at the end. Okay, I've got an example for you. All right, next. Here's a, here's a beautiful one. I kissed her. She slapped me, right? Now, he doesn't have to say anything that happened in the beginning, like before the, before the act happened or after the act happened or anything in between, all right? Just six words, okay? Three words and three words gives you the entire picture of exactly what happened. And your imagination will create the entire picture for you. Mohammed Yassin says, I would like to know how you would star email of a top company instead of saying in such uncertain times. All right, uh, Mohammed, could you repeat your question and clarify? Because I don't completely understand what you mean. I think everybody said one, so that's, that's fine. Yeah, all right. All right, so how to get good at doing this, all right? How to get good at doing this. Uh, um, bad news is that there's only uh, three ways to do it and they all involve actual hard work. You have to uh, read a lot, think a lot, and write a lot. Uh, reading a lot is going to give you a lot of these uh, uh, well, it's going to give you the, the word bank that you can use, and it's going to give you the vocabulary, vocabulary that you can use to make these uh, double meaning switches and new definition switches and double entendres and, and wordplay, okay? Uh, it's also going to um, give you uh, a database of, of imagery, of image concepts, of motifs that you can use to add imagery to your language, all right? Uh, once you've read a lot, you have to actually think about it a lot. So, uh, you know, before, you're, like, before you try to say something or write something, you have to always be thinking about how can I say this more impactfully? And finally, you have to write a lot because this only comes with, with practice. Every example I gave you is a, a copywriter or an author. Uh, and we've been doing this for, you know, uh, for years, thousands and thousands of hours, okay? Uh, and it takes time. But if you keep trying to do it, if you keep thinking about it, about how you can do it, and if you keep practicing it, it starts to become a second nature for you. Because I can guarantee you that we didn't start out writing this way. Lena asks, how can we be mindful of the cultural nuances when writing? Um, <laughs> I'm the worst person to ask about that because I, I really don't care about cultural nuances. Um, you have to ask somebody who is more of a, like a, like a PR person um, who works for uh, corporations and big brands because they're very uh, hip to this kind of thing. Me, I just, I'm just, I am who I am. And uh, that works in my favor and it also works uh, to my disadvantage. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so. We're nearing the end and we're gonna, we can do the questions, okay? So tools to help you get started with uh, on, or on this journey, all right? Uh, the first one I already mentioned, 
Um, it's called Meet the Stick by Chip, Chip Heath and Dan Heath. You can get it on Amazon or Audible. Okay. Uh, this is another book that pretty much every serious copywriter owns. And it's a book called The Brilliance Breakthrough by a very famous copywriter called Eugene Schwartz. And this is where I got the title of the presentation from. Because the, the subtitle of this book is How to Talk and Write so that people will never forget, forget you. Okay? And this book, if you buy it, it comes with a workbook. And the entire book is about teaching you uh, well, helping you unlearn, first of all, the very bad writing practices that we learned in, in, in school and university and fixing the way you write so that you can actually write in a way that is interesting and persuasive. Okay. And you can get this book at brilliancebreakthroughbook.com. The book is, uh, it's expensive. It's pricey. It's $195. But if you are someone who cares about uh, communication seriously, then this book is a must buy. And finally, this is a free resource, okay? <laughs> Richard, that's a, that's a good try. If you can write your wrongs, you'll be all right. That's a good try. I think you can tighten it up a bit. Uh, uh, it, this, it's, it's a bit uh, clunky. I, I think you can tighten it up a bit. Okay, so this last resource is called A Technique for Producing ideas by James Webb Young. It was first published in the 1940s. Okay, so it's public domain now and you can get PDFs online. If you go to dropkickcopy.com slash sana and drop your email, name and email address there, I'll send you a PDF copy of that book. All right. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. So we're going to take questions now. And uh, first, let me do uh, let me do Ammar's question uh, talking about historical subjects in an interesting way. In the meantime, you can drop your questions in the chat. All right. How to find your own voice. You find your own voice, Mayur, by writing a lot. Here we go. Here's the example. All right. Where are we? Ryan asks, what would you suggest is the best way to get started as a copywriter? Do you have a beginner's guide we can purchase? Uh, that's something that you can Google, Ryan. Jonathan says or asks, uh, Cernovich said that the future belongs to storytellers. Are there any resources to get started on learning better storytelling? Um, okay, so you can get uh, the book called Wired for Story, okay, on Amazon. There's another book called My Voice Will Go With You. And there's another book by, it's a book for, by a lawyer named Jerry Spence, and it's called how to argue and how to argue your case and win every time. If you just uh, look, uh, search Amazon for, uh, for books by Jerry Spence, you'll find that book. All right. Where is that church? Come on. There's a bit here where he talks about uh, Christianity. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can search this document. Keep dropping your uh, questions in the chat and we'll get to them. How's everything going on your end, Sana? Things are great. I'm enjoying the questions that are dropping in. I do have a burning question myself, though. Um, do you really have to talk about Corona or COVID-19 at this point in time in your copy? What's your advice on that? Um, you don't have to talk about it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's either or. Personally, I, I prefer not to talk about it because it's uh, depressing. People are, um, it, people are already 
they're already inundated by it and uh, totally bombarded and facing information overwhelmed by it. They're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're in the WhatsApp groups. The you know information is flying around. Most of it is um, speculation and um, you know unconfirmed reports and things like that. Me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know be explicit about it. However, it's the elephant in the room. You can't avoid uh, you can't avoid it. Uh, so I would refer to it indirectly if I if I was um, you know communicating for uh, you know something like a like a corporation or a brand. And as a personal brand, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about in whatever way you want to talk about. But for uh, for small businesses, for corporations like enterprise level people, they have to be a little bit more uh, uh, circumspect with their language. Yeah. And how about this long form versus short form style of copywriting? Like when you're writing a newsletter and all these, the ones that you showed us, the examples, very long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no such thing as too long. There's only too boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So here's the, here's the example that I wanted to talk to you about uh, or, or talk, uh, answer uh, Amar's question with. Okay. So this is by a copywriter, Jim Rutz. Okay. And he's writing about, uh, he's writing about the spread of the church in the fourth century. Okay. Um, and this is a historical topic, uh, you know, unless you're somebody who cares about history, they, they couldn't be something more boring, all right? And Jim Rutz writes, a funny thing happened on the way to the millennium. In the fourth century, the church's wheels fell off. Until then, it looked like the gospel would reach the outermost parts at chariot race speed, or at least before McDonald's did. No such luck. Just before 8300, the church made the biggest blunder in its history and crashed like an indie racer with a stuck throttle and a tank full of gas. See what I mean? So there's a way to make boring subjects interesting through imagery. So again, what Jim Rutz is doing here, he's showing us, not telling us, okay? He, he could have said, uh, in the fourth century, Christianity was about to spread to the ends of the earth, but something happened that made it uh, slow down and stop entirely. All right. But that's not what he did. You can use images that already exist in your readers. Uh, how to get better at tweeting? Tweet a lot. That was my yours question. If you want to get better at tweeting, tweet a lot. Uh, Victor asks, would you say persuasion books go hand in hand with the copy books or Eugene Schwartz books? I'm in enterprise software sales. So trying to improve copy or persuasion, but vocal copy, word choice and persuasion. Okay, that's an excellent question. Yes, the abstraction of copywriting is persuasion if we take it one level higher okay and if you want books on persuasion scott adams uh the uh the the the, the artist behind the dilbert comics and the author of several books the most uh, most recent book he's got out is called loser think he has a persuasion curriculum on his website if you just google uh scott adams persuasion curriculum you'll get an entire list Uh, okay, Richard has a comment here. He says, when talking about coronavirus, accept it as an unmentioned objection and then create the positive future and how we are going to create this. I think that's, a, that's an exa excellent example or, or, or insight. What I've been doing with my clients is I've been talking about topics that relate to coronavirus and the situation that we're in without actually mentioning, uh, mentioning it. So I've been talking about uh, how to be patient. I've been talking about uh, how to manage risk. I've been talking about um, I've been talking about growth and optimal growth versus versus maximal growth. Okay, so I've been talking about all these topics that are on people's minds without actually referencing the uh, you know the virus or the economic downturn or things like that. Renee says that simple writing tip is going to change the way I think about writing. Excellent. I'm glad it, it's it's useful. Scott uh, Abdul Aziz asks, Scott Adams was in Hoaxed too, right? Yes, he was. He was in the movie Hoaxed by Mike Cernovich, hoaxmovie.com, if you want to watch it. 
Oh, that is actually another excellent resource that would be very, very useful to you because you understand how everything is narrative. Okay, everything is a story. The information that we choose to convey, that's, I mean, thank you for bringing that up because that reminds me of something. The information that we choose to convey, by choosing that information, we are telling a story that might not be the entire picture. If you think about a photograph that's in the newspaper or a photograph in a news article online, okay? That photograph that was chosen or taken by the photographer is that photographer's subjective understanding of the objective situation that was going on. And if you have a photographer that is unscrupulous or not intent on communicating the objective reality, you could have pictures which are frozen moments in time, uh, pictures that do not convey the reality. What they do convey is an opinion, a subjective opinion of reality by that photographer. And it's the same thing with, uh, with broadcast news, and it's the same thing with newspapers, it's the same thing with blogs online, or news, news articles online. Everything is narrative. And each of us, as we try to exert our will in the on the world, we are all in a war of narratives. And your ability to tell a compelling narrative, okay, and impose your narrative on the world and environment around you is directly correlated with your ability to get what you want in terms of your goals, whether that's, uh, whether that's your health, whether that's your career, whether that's your relationship, whether that's your finances. Okay, more questions. Uh, does copy for emails differ that much for the differ that much from the copy in chat dms um uh yes a little bit because a, a dm is much more dynamic uh you know a copy a copy in emails you're sending a message okay a message in its entirety and you're waiting for some sort of reply to come back but where in dms you're in an active interactive conversation in real time so it's a little bit different okay that's why if you're doing a messenger chatbot, okay, I see a lot of people send paragraphs of text in their messenger chatbots, which is wrong. Nobody reads messenger DMs that way, okay? And it's immediately obvious that you're, that's the bot and not the person. What you wanna say, what do you, you wanna send is like a, you know, one sentence messages and make it look like it's a conversation. Uh, Victor asks, when doing B2B emails, would you say you have to tone down how good your copy is. Not sure if that makes sense. Mm. If you're trying to show people how good your copy is, you're failing at copy. Copy, good copy is actually invisible. Like I should not be able to tell that a copywriter is trying to sell me something. Good copy is invisible. If I notice the copy, there's something wrong with it. The only response to good copy should be, wow where can i buy that or how can i buy that okay all right thanks for joining us Marad. thank you appreciate you coming how to do interesting small talk hmm. uh that's not really the topic of this webinar and i'm not very qualified to do that maybe sana can answer it shana is really good at uh, uh, that kind of stuff uh preparation sana. preparation preparation that's the executive summary <laughs> I know a lot of people think that impromptu speaking is actually impromptu, but matter of fact is that a lot of people are sitting on a reservoir of like stories and anecdotes that I've tried and tested before. And then they repeat them and recycle them in many places. This is what comedians do. It's what great speakers do. It's what great copywriters do. It's like recycling your content. Exactly. I mean, that is exactly it. Yeah. So it's like a, like I'll, I'll have some stories in my, like my toolbox of stories and I practice it with people. And then when the time comes, I bust out the stories, right? And it sounds like I just came up with it on the spot, but in reality, I've practiced it a bunch of times before. Uh, Mayur asks, what's your Bible for copywriting? Mm, there is no one book that you can refer to for copywriting. It's really a bunch of books. And I think that's something that you can Google, uh, copywriting resources. Uh, Renee asks, just saw a good example, a note that a friend of mine just got. 
and it says, Jay, so sorry about the temporary closing of your business. It's for a good cause, keeping me alive. <laughs> uh, okay, that's pretty funny. All right, okay, cool. Thank you, Renee. Thanks for sharing that. Let me see, did I get all of the questions? I think I did. So we've got five minutes left before the webinar is officially um, done. So if you have any more questions, let me know. Will there be a recording of this session? Yes, there will be a recording of this session. It will be up on the MENA Speakers YouTube channel. And I believe that they will email anybody who registered for the event the link to the replay. We will be sending it out afterwards. And since I have a few more minutes with you, you're very keen on building newsletters and newsletters databases. Do you believe that's the best way to get conversions on business? It really depends on uh, the, the type of business that you're doing. Uh, what email marketing or the email as a channel, a marketing channel is it's, it's the channel that gives you the highest return on your investment. So every dollar spent on email marketing gives you $44 back in return. And that's according to, I believe, the Direct Marketing Association in England, um, based on some research that they've done, okay? Uh, and what you find is that um, human behavior really doesn't change that, that much. Despite technology changing and despite new techniques of marketing, um, you know, coming out, uh, you know, every six months is as it were, uh, people fall back to the tried and true methods. This is why actually direct mail, which is like paper, uh, you know, it's like the, the written version, the paper version of email uh, still works. Okay. And it actually works a lot better than online marketing for now because uh, nobody's doing it. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm partial to email because I think that it allows you to build a, a more long-term relationship with your audience. Uh, however, there are people, you know, very successful business owners that, you know, don't use email at all. So it really depends on, um, it really depends on A, what your business model is, to B, uh, what your audience is. Because if you're selling something to, um, to Gen, Gen Z, Okay, they're not on, they're not checking. I mean, I don't even know if they have email addresses. They're on, they're on Telegram and they're on TikTok. So it really depends. But then again, if you're somebody who's watching this webinar, okay, your audience, I guess it, it's not really Generation Z. So you'd be better off sticking with the tried and true methods like email. And I believe there's like Adobe comes out with this, uh, this report every year called the state of email, I think it's called. And what they found is that uh, email and direct mail are still the most, um, they are the two channels that uh, consumers like to be contacted on by brands, okay? Despite people thinking that millennials have to be market, marketed to in a different way uh, than you know, other people, uh, the fact is that they use email a lot. And in fact, millennials now are, are they're older now, they're working, uh, they, you know, they're, they have jobs, they're in their, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe mid to late twenties and stuff like that. They have jobs, they have responsibilities, they have, they have to check their email. So it, that's a, a long roundabout way of saying, you know, email is good. Awesome. So we are reaching our last minute here. Um, I want to thank you, Nabil, um, for doing this. And I know that you can absolutely help people create content and copy you're by the ways you've done it with us i think you are one of the coolest voices um at this point in time when it comes to content creation and you have a way of getting the essence of a brand so i thank you so much for doing this webinar and for taking time out of your valuable quarantine time uh, <laughs> amazing so we will be in touch i also want to thank everyone for joining in on this call we'll be sending out a news an email um, you know, with the recording as mentioned. And we'll be having a lot more webinars coming up to make the most out of this time for all of you. Um, again, thank you. Have an amazing rest of the day and uh, take care. All right. Salam, everyone. <laughs>